In this video, I want to briefly remind you of how to multiply by powers of 10. So that means multiplying by 10, by 100, by 1,000, by 10,000, etc. When you've either got an integer or you've got a decimal. Okay, so if you've got something like 32 and you times it by 10, then essentially you're sticking a zero on the end, right? So 320. And if you've got something like 576 and you're multiplying it by 100, you are essentially sticking two zeros on the end and getting 57,600. OK, and let's continue this on. So 837 times 1,000. Well, that will be 837. Then you stick three zeros on the end. So we have 837,000. OK, now, essentially, what is happening? OK, so we talk about, oh, we just put a zero on the end, or we put two zeros on the end, or we put three zeros on the end. Really what's going on behind the scenes is you can consider it as a movement of the decimal point. Now, when I write down the number 300, well, sorry, 32, let's start with that. When I write down the number 32, I don't bother writing down a decimal point. But 32 is 32.0. That and 32 are precisely the same number. OK? So when you multiply by 10, it moves the decimal point one step to the right. OK? And that leaves us with 320. If instead we want to multiply by 100, we move the decimal point two steps to the right. And if we want to multiply 32 by 1,000, we move the decimal point three times long. OK? And that gives us our 32,000. So if I have something like, let's say, let's move that as well. Let's say I've got five... 173.6289 and I want to multiply that by 100. The idea of uh, sticking two zeros on the end no longer works, okay? I can't do that because if I did, if I just stuck two zeros on the end, I would just be writing down precisely the same number. So the idea is that the decimal point needs to move, and when you're multiplying by powers of 10, it will move it to the right. And because it's 100, it's got to move two steps to the right. And so our answer is 57362.89. So 57,362.89. Okay? And that's how we can multiply by powers of 10.